G'day folks. Well, for a uh, upcoming project, I'm going to turn a 2U rack server case into a dual wall PC. In other words, I'm going to cut and shut and modify so I've got two ATX main boards, power supplies, and everything essentially built into one casing on the wall. But first, I thought I'd just show you before I gut this thing, it's a uh, Dell 2850. It's a ultra scuzzy ultra 320 uh, based server pretty much obsolete to me and quite a few people it's fairly old it's about five six generations old so I'm going to part it out but before then I just thought I'd show you how some of this stuff goes together because not everyone watching this channel has access to this kind of thing and people just like to see how it goes together I realize this is already missing things like RAM CPUs and drives but I'll do my best to demonstrate and explain how it works. For example, there's a uh, ultra drive. They're all caddy mounted, fairly small capacity. Uh, this one here is 10,000 RPM, 73 gigabytes. And as I've been told, it's due to the high RPMs, this drive can transfer data very quickly, especially when you've got 15 or 20 students or office people smashing data at the server all at once. Uh, the others are 18 gig. Yeah, 18 gigabytes at 15,000 RPM. That drive has extremely high access rates to the data itself so it's not so much a storage device it is a transfer midway point it's basically midway island between a bigger server like a NAS server and your personnel's workstations so they can just slot in like so um, in the interest of dismantling this thing we've got everything's plug and play everything just unplugs it's amazing it's awesome awesome equipment so all the fans again you want to take the fan out there you go just pops out another one quick and easy made for minimal downtime, maximum run time. Basically they run 24-7 as long as you want or, or until something breaks. Power supplies. Again. Hot swappable, dual redundant power supplies. Uh, output 12 volts, 57.3 amps. 3.3 volts standby, 5.2 amps. All the rest of the voltage regulation and DC to DC conversion is done on board. Uh, CPUs, not hot swappable, but I don't have any in here, of course. Nice uh, passive heat sinks, it's all based on case airflow. These are PGA sockets, not LGA. The ones that I'm actually using at the moment are LGA, next generation. Again, this thing is several generations old. It is way out of date and I do not have parts to finish it off and actually build it into a working server. They are best used on much more modern servers. So, yeah. PGA sockets, dual Xeons, dual dual cores. It will not run quad cores from what I understand. Fan assembly, again, everything's just snap in. Riser card, which has PCI, uh, PCI-X on it. Uh, there's, that goes to the Ultra 320 back plane. Again, if I want to take this out, I 
everything's just plug and play. Very easy. Levers, push pins, whatever. Foxconn connectors. Where's that? That's the battery. That's a right back battery for the uh, raid. If that goes bad, bad things happen. Keep your batteries charged or replaced with good ones. So that's out. Again, driver rays. Well, if your DVD drive isn't working, there you go, it's out. Floppy drive isn't working. There you go, you can swap it over. If the whole drive array, the back plane is faulty. You, you can swap the whole thing out. Not a problem. <laughs> you gotta love working on servers. Again, I'm fairly new to it, but just taking these apart and examining how they work. I'm learning a lot about them and it's really good fun. If anyone gets the chance to pull, find or pick up or pull apart something like this, it's well worth the experience. It's just, it's interesting tech. It's really robust tech. Incredibly robust. It's designed for 24 seven operation for companies like telecommunications companies, big business banks, anything like that. They'll run racks of these things from floor, floor to ceiling wall to wall in a basement. I can't imagine the heating and cooling or refrigeration bill on a centre like that but I've seen photos of these kind of servers just floor to ceiling in racks as far as you can see just all the way down one length of the building to the other. Hundreds of them. So I can't imagine the power bills, the cooling bills to keep the whole centre cool Obviously there are some serious airflow dynamics, probably a partition between the back of the rack and the front of the rack so that cold air is pumped into the room in front and drawn through. Um, yeah, it's really interesting stuff, but yeah, that's a Dell 20, is it 29, Power Edge 2850. Uh, it's capable of two uh, PGA dual core Xeons, that's about it. I don't think you can stuff quad cores in there. I don't even, I don't even think quad core came out in L, uh, PGA. I think it's all LGA. But again, nice chassis. I'm going to modify it heavily, including stripping some of this drive bay down and mount two ATX main boards in it. Uh, a couple of, well, at least one or two ROM drives. Not that they're that necessary these days with solid state drives and USB sticks to transfer data. I don't think I'll even bother putting ROM drives in there like a optical drive. But I will uh, yeah, endeavour to make wall PC Mark III which will be dual main board, dual monitors, or possibly single monitor, just a, a um, KVM switch. And uh, yeah, one will be a Core i5, the other will be a Core 2 Duo uh, 8400 or similar, even a uh, Core 2 Quad. Could be fun. <laughs> Could be a lot of fun. But as you can see, we've got a lot of onboard tech. DC to DC converters galore, there's one there. That's a 5 volt DC to DC converter. That's another. It's a 3 volt DC to DC converter. Um, lots of solid state or semi solid caps. That is networking, or actually, no, no that's interface. You've got two networking ports on here, but you've got interface as well for a. Oh, I like my. Um, a remote interface terminal essentially. ATI Radon Mobility, basic 64 meg onboard video, nothing special there. Um, LSI Logic, ARM Fusion, MPT, that's all SCSI stuff. Uh, yeah, and PCI X, normal PCI slot is about that long. X has the 
extra length card on it and you can I believe you can run PCI X cards in PCI slots they either won't run or you'll get limited functionality and likewise you can run regular PCI slot cards in there no problem depending on the system I'm sure there are complications in some of the systems but you know how it is Yes, it's your home PC, just industrialised essentially. <laughs> Very powerful, lots of power consumption, plenty of RAM, just way overbuilt and a bit hard to upgrade if you want to turn it into, say, a gaming PC. I hear that's really hard. I want to do it, but I hear it's really hard to actually turn one of these into a proper performance PC, despite the excess amount of CPU and power and everything apparently is not that easy so yeah we'll play around with it later anyway thanks for watching